With his trusty metal detector, Duluth Wing hunts for artifacts at the chain of ponds in western Maine. It's near the Canadian border. This trail right here, I found some musket balls right along this trail. Duluth has assembled what might be the largest collection of relics from the Benedict Arnold expedition. He's found knives, shoe buckles, tin cups, nails, and a lot of musket balls. Found stuff everywhere you can see here. A few musket balls here and there, maybe a few nails. But the majority of the stuff was down there where they loaded the boat. In September 1775, George Washington dispatched Benedict Arnold to Fort Western at Augusta, Maine. He brought 1,100 men with him. Their orders? March 275 miles through the Maine wilderness, then make a surprise attack on the British in Quebec City. It was a mission of remarkable hardship. Everything imaginable went wrong. Floods, illness, desertion. It took a month just to get to the chain of ponds. The soldiers wrote in their diaries that camping here was cold, snowy, and wet. They all talked about being wet all day, all night, sleeping around, trying to sleep around the campfire, but stayed awake most of the night waiting for daylight to come. Today we think of Benedict Arnold as a traitor. He switched sides during the Revolutionary War, from the colonies to the British. Duluth has a different take. He was no traitor when he went through here. He was a Revolutionary War hero. It seems like if you do one, make one mistake, they'll, they'll tag you for that for the rest of your life. You know, you're, you're a traitor. But if you live an honorable life up to that point, uh, nobody wants to talk about it. Prior to the war, Arnold thrived as a merchant in New Haven, Connecticut. After the battles of Lexington and Concord, Arnold joined the Massachusetts militia. And in time, Washington saw Arnold as perfectly suited to lead the invasion of Quebec. He was a fighting general. He was capable. Some of his other generals uh, just didn't seem to be as aggressive as Arnold, and he was a great, they knew that men would follow him. The idea was this, capture British Quebec City from the least likely location, the Maine Woods. A successful attack would stop the British from isolating New England from the rest of the colonies. It also might inspire French settlers to take up arms and join the Americans. But first, Arnold had to get there. There was no road, just an old Indian route. The expedition marched up the Kennebec River and the Dead River, over the height of land, then down the Chaudière River. Their journey started in late September. The expedition loaded supplies into 200 quickly made bateaux, then headed up the Kennebec. I don't think it was ever easy. These boys, rather than try to paddle the pole, they jumped overboard and grabbed the boat by the, by the painter, you know, by the sides or whatever, and dragged it along and got up by a rock and fell in and pretty near drowned. And, hung on the bushes and went up and grabbed a hold of the boat again. The march was much more difficult than anticipated. The hastily made boats fell apart. Supplies lost. Men were hurt. Eventually, the troops reached a 12-mile portage trail from the Kennebec River to the Dead River. This trail is known as the Great Carrying Place. Some people called it the Terrible Carrying Place. There's a mountain there. They talked about blowdowns and clearing the trees, then got into a, what they called a boggy, swampy, cedar swamp. You, you jump from one rock to the other, or you slip and go down between the rocks. You know, you have your choice. The water was green, they said. They drank it and got dysentery. And, and then when they got near what's presently Flagstaff Lake, there was a huge morass, they called it. If you're walking through, it's one thing, but lugging a boat on your back uh, is something different. Then came the hurricane. Some soldiers reported the water rose as much as nine feet. They talked about extreme current. Some of the men overturned in the bateaus and swam downstream, and somebody else ran down and pulled them ashore, and they lost their gun, everything that they had. Arnold claimed a, a chest of gold coins washed off the front of the bateau in the Dead River. You've looked for it. Well, <laughs> you've got to have something to keep you going. At home, Duluth's garage is full, well organized, but full of odds and ends, from copper pipes to antlers. Don't look around too much here now. You, you may find something that belongs to you. The garage is also home to Duluth's collection of Arnold Expedition relics. One day I found 832 musket balls in one place, right underneath the tree. I couldn't sleep that night. This is a knee buckle. These are bent nails, of course. We find little things like a needle and a fish hook. This was a pewter cup and a pewter spoon I found right down here at Arnold Falls. 
I found all these right together in one place. So I, I just figured a soldier got up and left his pack that morning. Duluth's passion for the Arnold story started in high school in the 1940s when he read Arundel by Kenneth Roberts. In the late 1960s, Duluth and a friend spent several years off and on paddling and hiking all of Arnold's route. Since then, Duluth returns to the trail time and again, discovering artifacts lost in the wake of the expedition. He says there's still more to discover. Man's uh, belt buckle and both shoe pats and his false teeth. You know, I could say he perished right there, but probably I'm a little morbid. It's quite possible Duluth could find the remains of a soldier. After the chain of ponds, the expedition climbed over the height of land. Arnold believed the trip would be easy from here, downriver to Quebec City. Instead, they encountered the big swamps of Megantic. It got so bad, soldiers ate their leather shoes and even their dogs. Some of them were destitute to the point where they just couldn't go anymore. So the, the question was whether you should help him or walk off and leave him. And they decided that the best thing to do was to walk off and leave him. One of the soldiers said, uh, and more than one, that death would be very welcome. I mean, they'd, they'd suffered enough. And how they kept going, I can't. I can't comprehend it. Even with the hardships and the desertion of several hundred men, the Arnold expedition reached Quebec City in early November 1775. They were joined by General Richard Montgomery and his troops. Then, on New Year's Eve, Arnold attacked the heavily fortified city of Quebec during a blizzard and lost. Oh, he lost badly. <laughs> he got a musket ball in the knee and Montgomery was killed. So the men were taken prisoner or escaped and a lot of them were taken prisoner. Despite the loss at Quebec City, Arnold lived to fight another day, as they say. He retreated up the St. Lawrence River and outfoxed the British the whole way. He is a hero because he held the British back one year. They were ready to take Boston, then New York, then go up the Hudson and do away with this rebel problem. And Arnold was up there fighting them and holding them back from cutting us off. This gave George Washington and everybody the winter of 1776 to do something. It wasn't bothered by the British. You get out here and spend some time and you, you feel like one of them. Back on the trail at the chain of ponds, Duluth scans the ground with his metal detector. No luck today. We need people that uh, have got the same interest to line right up with a bunch of these metal detectors and, and do some work. We need a, a real effort to find more of this stuff and determine right where he went. If he showed up here today, what would you say to him? <laughs> I'd say, I've been studying you for 70 years. Where the hell have you been? You know, you could answer a lot of my questions. Now I have a chance to ask you.